Hello students, in the last video we have seen the basics of human reproduction. In this video, let us understand the male reproductive system of man. Reproduction in lower and higher animals. This video contains the textual diagrams from the Maharashtra State Board textbook of class 12th biology. Also, the images and diagrams from all the websites mentioned here have been used in this video. Let us understand the structure of the male reproductive system of man. The male reproductive system can be broadly divided into these parts. First of all, the testes which are the male gonads or primary sex organs of the male. Then the accessory ducts. Ducts means tubular structures. The accessory ducts are those tubular structures which will help in the transportation of semen and the transportation of the male gametes. What are the accessory ducts here? The rete testis, vasa efferentia, epididymis, vas deferens, the ejaculatory duct and the urethra. Then the accessory glands. Accessory glands are those glands which will contribute to the formation of semen. They are the seminal vesicles, prostate gland and the cowper's glands and the external genitalia, meaning those parts of the reproductive system which are located on the external body surface. They are the penis and the scrotum. Now let us study the male reproductive system. We begin from the primary sex organs of males that is the testis. The testis or the male gonads are paired organs which are present on the lower side of the abdominal cavity. They are enclosed in a loose pouch of skin which is known as the scrotum. In this diagram here, we can see the location of the testis. The testis originate from the mesoderm. When in the fetal stage, the testis develop in the abdominal cavity. But from the abdominal cavity, they descend down here into the scrotum. The testis descend from the abdominal cavity into the scrotum through a passage which is known as the inguinal canal. Here we can see the inguinal canal. Now what if the testis fail to descend into the scrotum? This results in a condition known as cryptochidism. In the later part of this video, we shall discuss in details about cryptochidism. Now let us understand the histology of the testis that is the different kinds of tissues and cells present inside the testis. For this let us study the LS that is longitudinal section also known as the vertical section of the testis. What kind of cells and tissues do we find here? The outermost covering of the testis is known as the tunica vaginalis. The word tunica means a covering. Next to the tunica vaginalis, there is another partial covering which is known as the tunica albuginea. The tunica albuginea enters inside the testis and divides it into several lobules. Inside a testis, 
we may find about 200 to 300 lobules. The partitions between these lobules are known as the septa. Inside each lobule can we see these tubular structures? These structures are nothing but the seminiferous tubules. Those tubules which are going to produce the male gametes or the sperms. Inside every lobule we will find 1 to 4 seminiferous tubules. Now how do the seminiferous tubules produce the sperms? What are the different types of cells inside the seminiferous tubule? To understand this, let us have a look at the TS or transverse section of the testis. This is the transverse section of the testis. Here we find many circular structures. These are the sections of seminiferous tubules. The tubules which will be producing the male gametes or the sperms. And in between these seminiferous tubules embedded in the connective tissue we see some groups of cells. These cells are known as the interstitial cells or the leading cells. Now let us understand what do we find inside a seminiferous tubule. The seminiferous tubule shows an outermost layer called as the germinal epithelium. The germinal epithelium will divide and redivide to produce the different developing stages of the sperms. The germinal epithelium Thallium rests on a membrane known as the basement membrane. As the germinal epithelium divides, the different stages of the sperms are produced, starting from the spermatogonia, the primary spermatocytes, the secondary spermatocytes, spermatids, and the mature sperms or the spermatozoa. Also in the seminiferous tubule, we find some tall pyramidal cells in between. These cells are known as the Sertoli cells or the sustentacular cells. What do these cells do? These cells provide nourishment to the different developing stages of sperms. Also, they provide a support internally to the seminiferous tubule. The sperm bundles are found attached to the Sertoli cells. These are the sperm bundles. The sperms, the matured sperms are present in such a way that their heads are resting on the Sertoli cells attached to the tip of the Sertoli cells and their tails are directed inwards towards the lumen or the central part of the seminiferous tubule. Now let us come back to the interstitial cells or the leading cells. These cells are endocrine in function. They produce the male hormone which is known as testosterone. Testosterone is that hormone which is responsible for producing the secondary sexual characters of the male. Let us now understand the accessory ducts of the male reproductive system. The accessory ducts will help in transportation of the sperm produced by the testis. The first one is the rete testis. The seminiferous tubules inside the testis converge on the posterior surface of the testis and form a network of fine tubules. This network is known as the rete testis. From the rete testis, fine tubules arise which pass out of the testis and join the epididymis. These tubules are known as the vasa efferentia. 
the vasa efferentia carry the sperms from the testis to the epididymis what is the epididymis can you see this curved c shaped part which is covering the testis posteriorly this is the epididymis the epididymis is the place where the sperms will be stored and will also undergo maturation the epididymis can be divided into three parts the head of the epididymis known as the caput epididymis the body known as the corpus epididymis and the tail known as the cauda epididymis let's see in the diagram this is the caput epididymis this is the corpus epididymis and this tail is the cauda epididymis the cauda epididymis will further join to a long tubular structure known as the vas deferens the vasa deferentia are paired ducts arising from the cauda epididymis of either sides each vas deferens arises from the cauda epididymis travels upwards up to the abdominal cavity loops over the ureter and finally joins the duct of the seminal vesicle after joining the ducts of the seminal vesicle they form a common tube which is known as the ejaculatory duct the ejaculatory duct further joins into the urethra the urethra is a long tubular structure and it is a common passage for urine as well as for the semen hence it is also known as the urino genital duct urino because it's a part of the excretory system transporting urine and genital because it is a duct of the reproductive system as well as it transports the sperms the urinogenital duct or urethra opens at the tip of the penis here this opening is known as the urethral orifice now let us study the accessory glands those glands which will contribute to the formation of semen the first ones in these are the seminal vesicles seminal vesicles are paired structures which lie on the posterior side of the urinary bladder you can see here this is the urinary bladder and these are the seminal vesicles the seminal vesicles produce an alkaline fluid which is the seminal fluid out of the total semen volume 60% is formed by the seminal fluid what does the seminal fluid contain it mainly contains fructose fibrinogen and prostaglandins fructose being a sugar or a carbohydrate provides energy for the movement of the sperms fibrinogen a protein brings about the coagulation of the semen so that it can be prepared quickly in the female reproductive tract and prostaglandins bring about movements like reverse peristalsis in the vagina uterus so that the sperms can move faster towards the female gamete coming to the next accessory gland the prostate gland the prostate gland is a single large gland present below the urinary bladder this is the urinary bladder and here is the prostate gland the prostate gland surrounds the urethra from all sides internally the prostate gland is made up of 20 to 30 lobes the prostate gland 
produces a slightly acidic fluid which is known as the prostatic fluid. The prostatic fluid forms 30% of the total semen volume. And what does the prostatic fluid contain? It contains citric acid, acid phosphatase and several other enzymes. This enzyme acid phosphatase will protect the sperms from the acidity in the vagina. Coming to the cowper's glands or the bulbo-urethral glands. The cowper's glands are a pair of very small, almost pea-sized glands. They are present on either sides of the urethra. They open into the urethra. They produce an alkaline viscous fluid which acts as a lubricant during the copulation. Why are they called bulbo-urethral glands? The shape if you see they are bulbous and as they are opening into the urethra that's why bulbo-urethral glands. The semen is the ejaculatory fluid of the male reproductive system. It is a viscous milky fluid and it consists of sperms or the male gametes, the secretions produced by the epididymis and the secretions produced by the accessory glands that is the seminal vesicles, prostate gland and the cowper's gland. The semen is alkaline in nature with a pH of 7.2 to 7.7. .7. A single ejaculation of semen contains about 400 million sperms. A single ejaculation of semen, that is the quantity of semen released at a time is about 2.5 ml to 4 ml. Coming to the external genitalia, external genitalia means those organs of the reproductive system which are present on the external body surface. The first organ here is penis. Penis is the organ of copulation in males. Copulatory organ means that organ which will transfer the male gametes inside the body of the female or in to the female reproductive tract. As you can see here in the diagram, the penis is an elongated cylindrical muscular structure. It shows three bundles of erectile tissue. It shows a pair of corpora cavernosa and corpus spongiosum. The corpora cavernosa are present on the lateral and the posterior sides of the penis. And in the middle is the corpus spongiosum. The urethra passes throughout the length of the penis and opens at the tip of the penis. The penis contains large number of blood sinuses. On sexual arousal, these sinuses get filled with blood and the penis elongates and becomes hard and erect. See this expanded portion of the penis? This expanded tip of the penis is a soft sensitive structure known as the glans penis. The penis is covered and protected by a loose retractable fold of skin which is known as the prepuce or the foreskin. The testes are contained in a loose pigmented pouch of skin known as the scrotum. The scrotum is located on the lower side of the abdomen on the upper thigh region just behind the penis. The scrotum is divided into the left 
and write scrotal sacs. Each scrotal sac contains one testis. Inside the scrotal sacs, a band of tissue known as the gubernaculum holds the testis. Though the testis are developing in the abdominal cavity, they descend down into the scrotum. Why so? That is because the normal human body temperature is too high for spermatogenesis and the temperature in the scrotum is 2 to 3 degrees Celsius lower than the normal body temperature and this temperature is suitable for the production and development of sperms. The testes are suspended into the scrotum with the help of the spermatic cord. See in the diagram, this is the testis and this structure is the spermatic cord which is suspending the testis into the scrotal cavity. The muscles known as cremaster muscles and dartos muscles will help to draw the testis close to the body or away from the body. In this diagram, you can see the position of the cremaster muscles. Cryptochidism. This is the condition where the testis fail to descend from the abdominal cavity through the inguinal canal into the scrotum. The testis remain in the abdominal cavity itself. What happens in this condition is that as the testes are still in the abdominal cavity, they cannot produce sperms. That is because the core body temperature is too high for spermatogenesis. The word cryptochidism comes from two words. Cryptos meaning hidden and ochis meaning testis. So the testes are remaining hidden inside the body cavity. Hence, the word cryptochidism. In this condition, as the testis cannot undergo spermatogenesis, it may lead to sterility in the male. Another condition is known as inguinal hernia. What happens here is that a loop of the intestine passes through the inguinal canal and enters the scrotum. This can be very painful for the person and it can be corrected by surgery. So that was an overview of the human male reproductive system. In the next video, we will be discussing the female reproductive system.